What's this? It's called a hide and slide feeder. It's a type of puzzle feeder used uh, particularly for uh, dogs and cats by pet owners. Uh, but increasingly there's been interest in using them uh, for snakes. And that's what I want to talk a bit about today. Jamie here from Impeccable Indigos. Check out our website, impeccableindigos.com. And please like and subscribe and comment and tell me what other indigo snake content you would like to see here on the channel. There's a lot of discussion today about reptile intelligence, and we have certainly established that snakes are capable of learning. They respond to training, they learn from new events, they are intelligent, thinking, learning animals. We don't have that much hard data yet about the relative intelligence of different species, but Eastern indigo snake keepers will often tell you they consider uh, Eastern Indigos to be the most intelligent of snakes. And I think that that is probably a good statement along with, you will hear similar things from uh, people who have direct experience with reticulated pythons and with king cobras. And Eastern Indigos and king cobras actually have a lot in common. Interestingly enough, I'm going to make another video about that soon. So um, this it's not anecdotal that snakes are learning intelligent animals. It is anecdotal what snakes are more important, but I'm gonna go with the idea that Eastern Indigos, partly because of my bias and interest, King Cobras are perhaps our most intelligent snake species and maybe retics in there as well. Now this is a puzzle feeder and some snake uh, keepers have become interested in testing their snakes with these or exposing their snakes with these. And so what you do is, is you put food, with dogs who use treats, put food in this little container, swing this around, close it this way, and now to open it, they're going to have to push this open and swing this around. And this particular one I think holds seven, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, items. There's a lot of discussion about this and using it with snakes. And I think there's, I think it's a really interesting and cool thing to do from the standpoint of enrichment. If you want to, we want to stimulate the environment of our snakes to give them enrichment that stimulates them, uh, stimulates their minds and varies their experience. And increasingly this is being promoted, not just in the reptile hobby, but actually has been promoted in the idea of enrichment has been a value that's of increasing importance in the zoo industry for many, many years. And it began with the highest of mammals, the most intelligent of mammals, was the interest in providing enrichment so they don't get bored and to try and break those kinds of uh, habitual behaviors we see of big cats pacing cages and things like that. But gradually it has worked its way down the evolutionary ladder, so to speak, so that now uh, the ASPA guidelines for indigo snakes include enrichment right in the formal guidelines. You can find that on the resources page of impeccable indigos. So I'm gonna show you here a video that's uh, sped up significantly. Um, the part I'm gonna show you is was originally about 28 minutes cut from about a 50 minute video. And I'm gonna show you that 28 minutes sped up very quickly in just a few minutes. And you'll see that what I've done is, is I put um, baby quail in each one of the feeder spots and presented it to my indigo iris, my indigo snake iris to see what she would be able to do. And as you can see, um, she sniffs around, she gets the scent right away. I used quail because it's her favorite food. It's the food that always activates her. And that's pretty much true of all my Eastern Indigos. They really prefer the birds to everything else. I also used only quail because I didn't want any variation between the different containers because maybe she would be more motivated towards one food rather than another. I wanted to keep it very consistent and run this sort of like a bit of an experiment. And indeed, I ran it several times. Now, this video is the third time I ran it. And uh, in each case, she's pretty much found all of the food. The biggest difference between the first time I ran this and the later times is that the first time she'd never seen this object before. 
and she didn't know that you could get food from it and it was an alien thing and it took her quite a while to explore it figure out it was safe figure out there was food within it and so forth so the one thing she clearly learned between the first time and subsequent attempts was that oh you can get food here and that's the kind of thing it's Indigo snakes have quick memories, quick learning abilities. They don't forget that. They have incredible mapping abilities. Once they learn a particular area, uh, they always come back to it. They know how to find their way around. And I'll tell you some stories about that some other time. So her speed did pick up, but only in the initial approach of knowing there was food here. Other than that, I don't think there was much learning going on in terms of how to get into these. And I think the reason for that is that because it's a two-step process, this idea of having to move and then this very complicated process of turning this, I don't really think Snake is capable of learning that. I don't believe so. And you see a lot of these videos in the snake groups where they talk about the snakes learning and puzzle solving. They refer to this as puzzle solving. And even though I'm an advocate for the idea of snake intelligence, even though I, I believe that Eastern Indigos are particularly intelligent and they recognize their keepers and they recognize territory that they're familiar with and they learn their way around quickly and they are learning animals, I don't think they're puzzle solving animals in the way that some people are claiming by using these items. I think what we see here as you're seeing the video unfold is very determined predator behavior. When she senses, when she smells that there's a quail somewhere in there, she is going to push and poke and strain and press and keep forcing her way in until she can hopefully try and obtain the food. She's determined because she is a predator and they are opportunistic hunters. These dry mark on species, they have to almost constantly hunt. They're, they have high metabolism. They have to take small prey that they can only overpower. They're not venomous, they're not constrictors. And so they're highly motivated. They're active hunters. They cover a lot of territory in the wild, which is why they have good map. They've developed good mapping abilities because they also have to be able to get back to the burrows that they might be staying in at night. So I think as you watch this, it's interesting to watch her. It's interesting to see how determined she is and how generally successful she is. But in running this several times, my impression is, is that she's not going to learn to solve these puzzles. Now, I will try it again without using the second layer of the lock. I'm thinking of trying it where just this part is closed and the lock is out of the way and see if she gets any better at pushing these out of the way. It might be hard to tell if there's really learning going on there, but if nothing else, it would make it easier and more consistent for her to get them out. I don't believe that there's puzzle solving abilities that are being displayed here, but I do believe that it's an interesting demonstration of how determined their prey behavior is, but uh, their predatory behavior is, but especially the good thing, the unarguable thing, is that this kind of experience is enriching. It is varied. I like to, I feed by off tongs a certain amount of the time. I feed off plates a certain amount of the time. And I also create scent trails and will park a prey animal up in a tree or in a, in a cork log or something like that so that the snake gets to track the scent trail and hunt the animal. And I just think that's really mentally healthy because that is a kind of environmental enrichment. So I like these from the standpoint of enrichment. These things can learn to solve puzzles per se, but of course we're only at the infancy of this kind of research. And this is not even a, a, a very controlled experiment, but in terms of the real science that's going on to determine snake intelligence, we are learning more and more about that every day and we will continue to do so in the future. And for my money, Eastern Indigos are among the smartest of snakes. Like and subscribe. Check out impeccableindigos.com for more material on this, on these subjects. Um, I, I have some material there from Laurie Torini, who has a channel on YouTube all about training snakes, which is really, really 
a strong indicator of intelligence and also a kind of enrichment. The simple act of training is a valuable enrichment for keeping our reptile charges. Puzzle learning, uh, this is available. It's called a hide and slide, and these are available from Amazon, among other places. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.